Hi, my name is Jake from Fairweather Garden Construction and today we're going to show you how to build a decking subframe. So the customer is using Smartboard today and they wanted it to finish where the last deck did underneath the door frame. So we've attached a 150mm piece of timber to the wall with concrete screws using a 10mm spacer to bring it away and that will give us our level line across the site to work away from. So this particular decking isn't square to the house, it's square to the patio and it's going to be square when it gets to the first step. So we've run the level line parallel to the patio, square off of here, which will run into the neighbouring side where it will step down to the next area, which will be about 150 mil lower than this one. We put some temporary blocks in to hold the, hold the post level until we get our posts in. When the posts go in, we'll lift these up dead level. We'll bring the level across here and make sure it's all plumb to the house and to the first wall plate we put in. So we're transferring this wall plate right the way around the side of the house where there'll be another step down to the utility area. This will transfer across to the neighbouring house where we'll use posts to keep this elevated and to keep it away from the wall. As you can see here where the last deck was before we took it out, um, it was tight up against the neighbouring house. So what we're going to do this time is bring it away 10 mil and put it on its own freestanding posts for structural support. Therefore, we're not attaching anything to their property. It might be tempted to bolt straight into your neighbouring property, but always get permission before you do that. The joists we're using on this project are 150 mil by 3.6 meters. So that's the most we're gonna get out of this joist without adding a second one in. So we're going to find a square off of this one, measure back to the house, get a joist in here so we can run all of our joists through the middle of this one so our decking boards can run the opposite direction. Because this is our 3.6 metres um, and it's all off at a different angle, we're gonna then cut this one in. Just use this mitre finder. We then transfer this onto the joist. Make sure your saw's turned off first and then use this as a guide on your saw Now that this is cut, it just makes the, the join a lot stronger and we can bolt this in, bolt this to the end square and level and then we can put our posts in ready for our joists. For all of our timber to timber installation, we use these new screws from Carpenters Mate. The reason we use them is they just feel a lot stronger when we're doing the project. They pull in and the star bit you get is bigger than normal so you don't get any threading and if for any particular reason you did need to take any joists off after installation or even when you need to move something twice um, you can take them out and not worry about having to waste a screw. So the reason we use the flathead screw is so we don't get this when we need to put our fascia board on and they pull in really tight. and it ends up completely flush. So our fascia ball can sit on and you don't have to recess any of the holes. All of our decking we do, we do on 400 mil centers. That's 40 centimeter between the middle of each joist. That gives it less flex and a lot stronger frame. When marking the first one, I'll go 400 mil from the outside to the outside. So then we can put our new joist in the same place, giving us a 400 mil center to center. <laughs> I'll mark these all the way along, then we can sit our joist in here and then get our screws in from the outside, square to that end. Because this run is square, outside square, and it's square back into the house, we know that this joist is 3.6 metres, so all of our joists that we bought at 3.6 will fit in exactly in here without any cutting, shimming. You just want it to be nice and easy. We can then add on a double plate on that end and back towards the wall. And then we can come off of that plate again, back towards that end of the garden. We just put a quick strike square where we want the joists to be so they don't go in at any silly angles and we can keep them all square with the top and the joist. We just run these flush into the line now, put them tight, flush at the top, make sure that's right. And get a second one. The easiest way to get the joists that are coming in this way, because it's such a steep angle, 
you can just get your mitre that you got earlier on, transfer it here, which will give you a square noggin to here. So we'll do that now. We're just using blackjack on this one to um, waterproof our cuts. The timber is treated right through, but it just gives it a bit more protection. Now we'll put this noggin in here tight, then we can run our new joist square to this one, so we avoided a really long angle. We're now getting our main posts in, which we dig to the correct length, backfill with concrete, postcrete, to make it quicker. We pull our levels in, we put our main ones in, and then afterwards we can add more strength and posts throughout. When the ground's nice and soft, we aim to get the posts in about 600 mil. When it's rock hard, we go down to when we feel suitable. Anything over 450 mil is usually fine. Once we've got our joist height in and level, just strike it off. Try and cut about five mil below the line just so you don't have any posts sticking out past the top of the joist. Makes it easier. Try to get the cut face facing upwards to stop any moisture getting into the new cut and then afterwards you can paint it. Paint all the exposed cuts, making sure no water gets into this part of the post. When you get your post in the right position, concrete it or use your post mix. Water first, add a bit of post mix, keep going, chop it in with an old piece of timber. Make sure the concrete's always above the ground height just to stop any water sitting in and around the post. It will help keep the post alive for a little bit longer. So on this particular deck, uh, we're going to have a step down here. So we're using 150mm timber, timber as our frame. We double joist this part. We can use one as a fascia board to tuck underneath and there's still plenty of flexibility. We can put a 5mm join, we can put a 4, 5, 3mm join on here to get our step. Then the next board will come in Sorry, up against this one. And then we'll have our 145 to 150 mil riser, which is a nice safe step. For each segment of the deck, we're trying to make it square. Then we keep our mitre part separate, which is, we just need a couple of noggins. That just makes all your joists the same size, the same square. You don't have to keep changing the cutter to different angles. And then now we can run them in this way or this way. They're all the same. And all that's left to do is put our smaller ones in here where required. Yeah. The, the reason we've got the, the support timbers in like this, they're only temporary, but they keep the weight off of the screw end and help us to maneuver this end to get it in without the pressure of the whole board coming down. So when we mark our noggins, we measure our centers for the center noggin. We just use a chalk line, a screw in either end, ping it down. And we can have one noggin this side of the line one the other side just so we can get our screws in. So always double check the off cuts just to make sure you can get as many bits out of it as you can. We need these at 350. So we're gonna get one, 700, 105. And that is just 150 mil of wastage on a 3.6 length, which is good. Just gonna reseal the end of these where we've done a new cut just try and prolong them a little bit more. Start one side of the line. Just keep them slightly lower than the joist so they don't get in the way when we put our deck boards on. This is where the hex heads are good because we don't need to worry about any fascia boards inside the deck. We like to use the pro hex head carpenters make screws inside the deck because they're actually recognised by building control. The deck boards that the customer's chosen is 3.6 metres, so what we try and do is make sure there's always 50 mil of joist underneath the last part of the, the board just to stop it potentially going through or breaking at the end. So this is 3.64, so now we're going to have to put another joist on the inside of this. So where these boards end, it's got a full joist underneath. Then we can run our new pattern from this way where it changes direction. Before we swap direction on the frame to change the board direction, we're going to add some true lock bolts into through the joist, past the joist, and I'll just show you how they work. We're gonna screw these on, on by hand, hand tight, and then 
structurally that post won't go anywhere now. No, on this particular deck we're changing direction, it's just the customer's preference, it's a pattern change but quite often you'll keep them all the same way but where we are doing it I will let you know how we do it and what you need to think about. Here I'm just putting a temporary block in where the post will be just because we might be changing it and we'll just double check the length, make sure this is correct and then we can change it for a real post. We know that here is 3.6 away from the house. So we now want our decking boards to change to this direction. We measure the board first usually, and it's just over 135 mil. So we want a four mil spacer in there, which will get us to 140 mil. Always measure first. Then find out where you want the step to be roughly. Divide it by this amount, and you want a whole board really, and this amount of board, we only need eight. So I've done the measurement, and we need to also allow for a front board and a front joist, which is 70 mil. That needs to come off the total length of this. Another way of doing it, some people find a lot easier, is to just mark, add your four mil gap, mark again, across along the board like so and on your last board you'll have this amount of overhang so when you get to the last one it looks like you've got a large amount of overhang but you want about a 10 to 15 mil overhang on the deck once you've got your outside joist your deck 20 mil as a fascia off of your last line, you will then be left with a 15-ish mil overhang, which we'd recommend go no more than, and it would carry on the whole way along the deck. So when you know you're happy with the amount you've done, we know this is roughly where we want the step to be anyway. We can transfer this length, 99 centimeters. We'll make another one that end. We'll make this a box section, level it up, and then run some joists the opposite direction for these boards. When we're screwing through double joists, we want to always use 150 mil screw. You want to try and get at least 50 mil into the next one. See the new 100 mils won't, won't quite go. So yeah, we'll change to 150 for this and then on the single joist, we'll keep the hundreds. So that's, that's today done. We've just got to come down off of that second joist tomorrow on a new area. We've got a new step in using the same process we did around the corner. This area is going to be 150 mil lower than the rest. We need to put all the noggins and joist in the other direction and to finish off this lower area, then we'll all be ready for deck boards and the cuts where we'll show you more. If you have any questions or comments relating to this video, please leave them in the section below. If you'd like to know about any of the products we've used in this video also, the link will be in the description. Thanks for watching our video today of how to build a subframe. My name is Jake from Fair with the Garden Construction. Thank you for watching the video.